The food delivery industry is rapidly rising in China to match the modern life of today's Chinese people. It is common to see food delivery drivers dressed in yellow or blue rushing along the streets in China. In recent years, the takeout army has grown stronger. At the end of 2018, China's two largest takeout platforms registered more than 3.6 million delivery drivers, with the largest, Meituan, reaching 23.9 million daily transactions. With coaxing by internet giants such as Alibaba, the online-to-offline model, or O2O, has risen in China. Ulame and Meituan, which were set up in 2009 and 2013, respectively, propelled the O2O system further. From takeouts to movie tickets, travel, and even lifestyle services, the service is no longer just limited to the restaurant industry, but has expanded into various industries in China, and delivery riders have had to become jack-of-all-trades in order to adapt to the competition. China has been experiencing torrential rains and flooding in recent months, but despite the threat of natural disasters, the sight of these takeout workers is still everywhere. Their desperate attempts to deliver takeouts have sparked a lot of discussion among Chinese netizens, most of whom find it interesting and think they're creative, but in fact, it's all about survival. Delivery riders have already become the new form of employment in China. Most of these people are not highly educated or skilled and are difficult to employ, and China's labor-intensive jobs are also in short supply when compared to the huge demand. According to the 2019-2020 reports of Meituan, the total number of riders earned an income through Meituan reached 3,987,000 in 2019, and among these people, more than 82% had high school education or less. There were 336,000 new riders registered during the outbreak of COVID-19, where 51% of the new riders lost their jobs or had their paychecks stopped due to the pandemic. 18.6% of the new delivery riders had been factory workers, while the second largest source were salespeople at 14.3%, who were also severely impacted by the pandemic. Many takeout riders put their safety at risk in order to have a stable source of income and will continue to deliver whether it's rain or flood. Despite the fact that delivery platforms give the riders a seemingly good income and even claim that they can help people out of poverty, this is not really the case. According to statistics, if you want to earn more than 1,000 USD a month in China, you have to deliver 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, and that's not possible. China's takeout platforms are different from those overseas. In order to compete with each other, their policies are skewed in favor of the customer. They have a strict deduction mechanism for their delivery men, mainly based on speed. So there are a lot of takeout riders who disregard the dangers of breaking traffic rules, running red lights, and even losing their lives. In September 2019, in Nanjing City, a total of 2,853 delivery riders were punished for violating traffic rules every three months, and one had been caught more than four times by traffic police in a month. In addition to the risk of delivery, sometimes food accidentally spills out. The riders could be fined for customers' complaints or bad reviews. If there is a late delivery because of bad weather, the customer can cancel the order with no cost, but the delivery riders have to cover the loss with their own money. Sometimes a bad review from a customer can cost a day's wages of a delivery rider. In addition to a strict system of deductions, the delivery riders will very likely encounter various kinds of differential treatment. In addition to receiving bad reviews, picky customers can publicly humiliate and scold if the delivery comes late. Even takeouts and delivery cars can be stolen at the same time.
As most Chinese do not have a good sense of rule of law, when faced with the deliberately difficult police and city officials, delivery riders could get bullied, beaten up, and seized without any proof. In March 2020, a media from Chongqing reported on the story of Zhao Xiaorong. Miss Zhao's son suffered from uremia and needed about 48,000 USD for a kidney transplant. However, the family is poverty-stricken. She worked day and night to make money from delivery. During her five-year struggle, she broke three electric bikes and kept delivering until 2 or 3 a.m. every day. Finally, in February 2019, she was able to have enough money for her son's kidney transplant. Her story was reported by the Chinese mainland media and dubbed as the Queen of Delivery, which was then made into a real-life model of hard work for the Chinese people. But the social problems behind the story, such as the inability of the poor to receive treatment, were ignored. Some people may wonder, if it is so hard to work as a delivery rider, why don't people seek other, more stable, low-skilled jobs? China is a country of nearly 1.4 billion people, where population supply exceeds labor demand and employment opportunities are limited. Many factories seek to employ workers at the lowest wage possible, and this results in fierce competition among the workers. In the past few years, the CCP has proposed a plan to lift itself out of poverty by 2020 and move towards an overall prosperous society. However, Chinese Premier Li Keqiang said at a meeting of the National People's Congress and the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference in May this year, in order to meet the demands of the top officials, fake poverty reduction has been reported across China. Add to this the serious disparity between the rich and the poor. Life at the lower class in China is unimaginable. Moreover, China does not have a comprehensive labor protection system. Although China has laws of maximum working hours and minimum wage, overtime without compensation is very common. In the absence of a monitoring system and the limited rights of labor unions, employees are unlikely to protect their basic rights and interests, which gives rise to China's sweatshops. If white-collar workers cannot protect their rights, it is even more impossible for the factory workers and delivery men to do so. When one of them falls down, there are always thousands of people waiting to take over their jobs. Like the Chinese government, many Chinese are proud of the fact that Beijing and Shanghai look more modern than New York. But China has never been as glamorous as it appears. Urbanization of rural areas has been the main hallmarks of modernization in every country in the world. But after more than 20 years of economic reform and development, China has not only failed to narrow the urban-rural gap, but has widened the gap between the rural and urban areas. The top-class people live in luxury, while low-level citizens have to work day and night for their next meal. Cheap labor causes low income, and low income causes demand for low-priced products, which in turn causes the development of low-end industries, which in turn requires cheap labor to support them. This internet cycle influences and promotes each other. This is the tragedy of the modern age of China.